We are calming down from a solar storm that has managed to bring aurora to many parts of the world. And we've got several bright regions on the Earth-facing disk. How will these affect you? Those stories and more in the news this week. We are calming down from the biggest solar storm we've had in months, and considering its near solar minimum, that's saying quite a bit. We had some gorgeous aurora over many parts of the world, and it even made it down into the United States. As we switch to our front side sun, you can see that coronal hole that rotated through the Earth strike zone, and along with a solar storm, it kind of intensified the effects. So we've actually had some decent storming over the past few days. Now, as things begin to calm down, we do still have a single bright region on the Earth-facing disk, but we do have also a couple hot spots that have been developing over the last couple days. Now, they're not flare producing, but we are watching them closely. As we switch to our backside sun, you can see that big bright region that's rotating through stereo's view right now, but it doesn't look like there's a lot behind it. So if things continue as they are, it does look like space weather is going to begin to quiet down. Switching to our moon, this week we are passing through the new moon phase, with the new moon being on the 6th, and even by the 9th, the moon will still only be about 5% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, now is a good time to catch those dim objects in the sky. And now for your Leo Mio Geo Orbit Outlook. As we switch to our low energy particles, these are the ones that cause surface charging on the outside of spacecraft. They can even cause charging on the solar arrays. You can actually see the, the red blobs being injected in and around the geo orbit. It's actually worse on the dawn side, which is the bottom of this figure. And you can see that big red ring building. Those are the fluxes kind of increasing over the last couple days. They will continue to increase easily over the next few days, possibly even the next week, as this solar storm continues to wane. So satellites like DirecTV and any geosynchronous satellites, you operators need to be aware you could have some surface charging issues over the next few days. Now as we switch to the higher energy stuff, this is the internal charging. These are the higher energy particles that can penetrate spacecraft vehicles and get into their electronics a lot more intensely. You can actually see a little bit of a red ring building up kind of around the MEO orbits and even into the LEO orbits. So satellite operators for GPS and even the LEO Leo orbits, even the Oscar satellites for you amateur radio operators, you guys got to deal with some issues and some anomalies, maybe even some tracking issues trying to catch these satellites. You're going to be dealing with this easily over the next couple days. Luckily, the worst part of that heavy ring has passed, so it looks like internal charging issues might actually wane over the next couple days, but you still got to give it a few days before things get better. Switching to your solar storm conditions, now for the most part things are finally getting back into the green after this waning solar storm has passed through. We do have still a chance for active conditions with about a 20% chance of a minor storm at high latitudes, but that's not really going to last all that long. At mid latitudes we're really looking at unsettled conditions with only about a 15% chance of active conditions sporadically, but things are definitely continuing to calm down and we should get back to quiet conditions by about the weekend. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to solar flares, and this should make you GPS users very happy. Now, we do have multiple bright spots on the Earth-facing disk right now, but none of them are strong enough to be considered sunspots, so the sun is still considered to be spotless right now. Luckily, though, it is boosting the solar flux into the low 70s. This is nice for amateur radio and shortwave radio responders. You should be getting some decent dayside propagation right now, especially as that solar storm continues to wane, so enjoy it. Now also because we are near solar minimum, we are getting a higher impingement of cosmic rays than we normally should have, and therefore you frequent flyers, and this does include you air crew who travel over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you guys are at the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this in consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is finally beginning to calm down. We had that massive coronal hole that rotated through the Earth's strike zone, and along with that solar storm that was launched to the west of us, it managed to bring aurora to many parts of the world. But things should continue to begin to calm down and probably get back to quiet conditions right around the weekend. Now on top of that, we do have some bright regions on the Earth-facing disk right now. A couple of those regions have been growing quite rapidly. Now they're not flare-active, 
active, but we are watching them. Meanwhile, they've managed to boost the solar flux and keep it up into the 70s, which means we have marginal radio propagation on the Earth's day side for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders. So enjoy that because these conditions could easily last through this week and possibly through the next week after that. Now, as far as you GPS users are concerned, well, now that the aurora is kind of waning, things should be getting better on the Earth's night side. And because Earth's day side looks pretty good for you, well, things should be looking pretty good as far as GPS reception all the way around. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.